And today we're going to be talking about the New Horizons mission yet again, and today we're going to discuss its next destination and what we've just discovered about the object that New Horizons is actually headed to. Now, this was in 2015 when it reached Pluto, but today we're talking about 2018-2019. Anyway, welcome to What The Math. <laughs> So you may still remember when in 2015 uh, New Horizons passed by Pluto and then pretty much spent the uh, rest of the year plus a few more months, as a matter of fact 16 months in total, transmitting data from this particular um, encounter and basically telling us about Pluto, showing us these incredible pictures that we have today and um, redefining our understanding of this beautiful dwarf planet. And then it kind of flew away and continued on its path. And almost right away, the scientists uh, from the New Horizon mission applied for an extension to their work and asked NASA to basically go visit another object. Now, which object? Well, it's the object that's about a billion kilometers away from Pluto. It's an object that we're going to be intersecting with right here, known as 2014 MU169. Now, this by itself is probably nothing really important. It just so happens that it lays in the same sort of plane of orbit um, as the New Horizons mission, and it's also just kind of in that general direction. And so, having changed the direction of, of motion just a little bit, the New Horizons will now basically be headed here. I'm going to accelerate time just so you can see how it happens. Um, by about December of 2018, uh, the probe will actually reach this particular region of space. And then this is when it's going to essentially wake up and start taking a lot of photos from the system. Now, there is a little bit of news about this particular region of space though, as we've been kind of trying to capture at least something from this super far region. Now, because this object is really small, it's not actually that big to begin with, approximately 30 kilometers in diameter, um, it basically kind of corresponds to a relatively large asteroid. It's not even a dwarf planet, as a matter of fact, it's just a, um, a, remain, a remainder from something that could have become a protoplanetary body a long time ago, but never really collided with any of the planets. And here comes New Horizons, it's going to pass by here anytime soon. So the interesting thing about this particular encounter is that, well, first of all, we just discovered that it's very likely that uh, 2014 Mu69 has at least one and possibly even more than one moon. Now that kind of changes a lot of things for us, mostly because it makes this mission a little bit more dangerous. There's now a slight chance that New Horizons might potentially collide with something. And because it's passing by uh, the distance of about 2,000 kilometers here, it might actually smack into something for sure. Especially if there's a lot of stuff here. The moon we discovered um, was discovered completely by accident. We weren't even looking for the moon. As a matter of fact, we were looking for this object. And how we look for this object and how we actually try to see it is really, really cool. And I actually wanted to tell you about this a little bit. So let's go back to Earth for a second. I'm going to try to demonstrate this to you. Uh, so we're going to go to our planet Earth that's going to be really, really, really super far away. There we are. Now we're looking into the sky right there and we're trying to see 2014 Mu69. It is only 30 kilometers across. The distance is ridiculous. Like this is about 45 astronomical units away from us or if you want this in kilometers, it's this number right here. So it's really, 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 really far. Um, and to see this object, we can really only do one thing, at least at the moment. We can try to look at those distant stars that you see on the screen. And as 2014 Mu69 passes in front of those stars, we can see what's known as the occultation. Now, an example of occultation would be this right now. So if I were to pass in front of the sun, I'm blocking the sun with my Earth. And we're looking for those occultations, um, but for an object that's ridiculously small, 
so small that it's just it's like looking for a tiny pebble uh, from a distance of hundreds and hundreds of kilometers. So we were looking at it from essentially several telescopes, but one of them is called Sophia, and Sophia is actually really cool. This is what it looks like. It's inside an airplane, and it's an airplane that flies across um, our planet Earth and looks at this region of space and tries to identify those occultations. But the reason we use airplane is because sometimes those occultations happen and in such a way that you can only see them from a very specific region on our planet Earth. And when this one happened, it, it could only be seen from a certain region in the Pacific Ocean. So that's why they had to use the airplane. And they've looked at it several times, and then they saw a tiny passage of something in front of the star. But it was too small. It was way too small to be this, because we know this is about 30 kilometers, and what they saw was only about uh, 5 kilometers. And they realized it must have been a moon. And... The reason why it made more sense that for this to be a moon is because the mathematical prediction for where uh, 2014 Mu 69 should be was always kind of wrong, as if something was shifting it around. And this is probably what was shifting it around. There's probably a moon size of about Halley's Comet. This is about uh, 5 kilometers, 5.5 kilometers in diameter, that orbits around it at a distance of about 200 kilometers or so, maybe 300 kilometers. And because of this, it always shifts it around just a little bit so that we can never really predict exactly where it is. I mean, now we can technically because we know it's there, but uh, it was very difficult for us before. And this would explain why we had so much trouble finding it. And if, you, if I were to run this faster, you could see that it kind of shifts a little bit. Uh, you can see the barrier center moves a little bit back and forth because of the moon. And um, because it's so hard and so difficult statistically to see just one moon by accident, we think that this is just one of many moons that's present here. As a matter of fact, we now think that there is quite a lot more moons out there. And this one I named, decided to name Moon because it's Mu69. You know, it kind of makes sense. So um, we think that this system actually has quite a lot of various moons um, in here. And this creates an opportunity for us to study these ancient objects, to understand them a little bit better, and also to answer one of the um, questions we couldn't really answer before of why this object is actually kind of really dark red in color. We currently think it's because of the interaction of um, the sun radiation with some of the materials on the surface here. So the sun is right there and... Um, the rays that do reach uh, Mu69, they kind of create this chemical reaction that turns this rock red. It's not red in, in this simulation, but it is dark red in real life. Uh, but um, by getting here with New Horizons and by studying this in more detail, we'll be able to understand it a lot more. Although since this is so far away from Earth, a single signal from New Horizons would actually take about 12 hours to reach Earth. And so this means that the transmission will be very, very long. It will take forever to uh, for, for the signals to get to Earth. And most importantly, uh, because the, um, the signal from here is very weak, it will probably take up to two years for us to get all of the data. So th the New Horizons will actually pass by the system, uh, take a lot of pictures, and then start transmitting them right away. Now, what happens after this, we don't really know. We don't really know if there's anything else on the way to where New Horizons is headed. But we know that the New Horizons is going to be escaping our solar system just like the Voyager probes, and it's going to be um, still operative until about 2030 or even 2040. So if there is anything else we discover that's going to be on this pathway, we might be able to take photos of those objects as well. Well, for now, that's all we know about um, this unusual, strange object known as 2014 uh, Mu69, and we now know that it has at least one moon. At least, almost certainly. Because otherwise, why else would it be hiding from us so well? Well, anyway, thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you learned something from this video. And hopefully now you know a little bit more about our solar system and about this unusual mission of New Horizons that started decades ago and is going to go on for another few decades. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Space out. And as always, bye-bye. And I'm going to just explore a few objects right there and let's see what happens to our solar system.